All right. All right, so welcome back. I'm Dr. Robert Potoff, and today we're going to be continuing our journey through the authority of the King James Bible. This is lesson number three of 365. So far, we've already looked at the inspiration of Scripture. We've looked at how God breathed every word of the Bible. Now we're going to explore another crucial doctrine, the preservation of God's Word. Now, let's start with Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 through 7, where the Bible says this, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, this verse is central to our understanding of preservation. God not only gave his word by inspiration, but he promised to keep and preserve it for every generation, just as silver is purified to remove to remove the impurities that are in it, God's word uh, and God's words are pure and have been preserved without error and without corruption. Now, what does it mean for God to preserve His word? That may sound a little funny to some of you, but let me explain. Preservation means that God has actively worked through history to ensure that His words remain available and accurate for His people. This isn't just about protecting the Bible from physical destruction. This is about keeping the truth of His Word intact, free from corruption or alteration. Now, throughout history, there have been many attempts to destroy the Bible or change its message, from the Roman emperors who tried to burn it to false teachers who altered key doctrines. Satan has always sought to corrupt God's Word, but God's promise stands nevertheless. His word will endure forever. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, if God promised to preserve his word, how do we know that it's in the King James Bible, and how do we know that the King James Bible is part of that preservation? Well, let me explain. The King James Bible was translated from the Texas Receptus in Greek and the Masoretic Text in Hebrew. These texts are faithfully handed down from generation to generation, preserved by believers who recognize the divine origin of these scriptures. So these folks knew that they were handling the word of God. They It wasn't just some translation. They knew these were the words of God. Unlike the manuscripts used by modern translations, which are based on the critical text, the text underlying the, the King James Version were not tampered with or corrupted by false teachings. The King James Bible is the fulfillment of God's promise to preserve it. Uh, his promise to preserve his word because it's it faithfully represents the original Hebrew and the original Greek text that God inspired. The translator of the King James Version were committed to ensuring that every single word was accurately reflected uh, inside of the preserved text without any modernist or any liberal influence that would compromise the truth. These guys took the job serious because they knew how serious the job was because they knew this was God's word they were handling and they treated it with the respect that it deserved here. Now, Jesus himself says this in Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, we ought to be able to take that pretty serious coming from the mouth of Jesus himself that he says, but my words shall not pass away. These are the things that he spake. These are the things that are written down. They shall not pass away. Now, this is the divine guarantee for us that no matter what happens in this world, God will remain unchanged and God's word will remain unchanged. The Bible has survived centuries of persecution it survived attempts to discredit it, and it's even um, even survived the introduction of corrupt translations. Yet, through it all, the King James Bible stands firm as the preserved Word of God for English-speaking people. It seems like every day they're they're coming out with a with a new version, a so-called better version. But every version that they've been coming out with for the past four hundred plus years, I think four hundred eleven years now. Every, it may, maybe more than that, every version that they've come out with, they always compare 
error. They've been trying for more than 400 years to make a more perfect word, and every time they pollute it when they try, every single time that they do it, they want to compare themselves to that King James 1611 Bible, where and every time they do, that King James Bible tells on them and shows exactly what they're doing. Now, if we don't believe in the preservation of God's Word, then we have no foundation for truth whatsoever. And without preservation, we'd be left wondering whether we can trust the Bible at all. But because God has preserved His Word, we can trust every page of the King James Bible to be His unchanging truth. What God said thousands of years ago, is He is still saying to us today. This is what it says in Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Maybe that flower that he's talking about is the tulip, Calvin's tulip. It'll fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. God's word doesn't fade. It doesn't change with time or culture. It stands forever. If we cannot trust that God has perfectly preserved his word, how in the world can we trust that he will perfectly preserve us? We couldn't, but because he has done what he said he would do with his word, we can trust that every word is true, every word is pure, every word is inspired, every word is perfect. We can trust it, and because we can trust that, we can trust that in the last day he will raise us up uncorruptible, incorrupted, saved, blood-bought, born again. Have you trusted his word today? If not, would you do that? Would you trust his word? Would you trust the most important part of the word? Would you trust that God has sent his son and that his son has shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, has died for your sins, has been buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture? Would you trust that today? And if you trust that, will you get in the book and will you read God's preserved letter to you? Thank you so much for joining me today as we explored the preservation of God's word. Uh, In our next lesson, we're going to dive into the differences between the Texas Receptus and the critical text and why it matters for the integrity of the Bible. Remember, the truth is found in the book, so read the book. Thank you.